Hello everybody, and we are back with part two of tier three. You already know the drill at this point. I have a microphone now, so hopefully that helps. And let's get into it. Arnold's real height is in reference to the actor Arnold Schwarzenegger and this bizarre situation in which people don't know his real height and even he has not said what his height is. So it comes down to people comparing him next to other known actors height in movies and people guess anywhere between 5'10 to 6'2. Uh, I have no idea why this was in tier 3 since it's the only one that doesn't fit, but uh, yeah, great way to start off part 2. Natural park closures is in reference to the fact that several national parks around the US will periodically close for unknown reasons. This can range anything from cleanup time to uh, certain year time events when supposedly workers are off, yet it doesn't make sense since national parks aren't exactly something that needs mediated, leaving people to believe uh, supernatural occurrences or things like I spoke of in my stairs video and so on and so forth, that there are the secretive um, phenomena that occur throughout US national parks that the managers of them want to keep the public quiet of. Lake Bacal is referencing Lake Bacal in Russia and is the deepest lake in the world. At 5,387 feet, it's host to several mysteries, including that of aliens and sea monsters and things such as. When the lake was first discovered, several runes and etchings were found that depicted giant fish people walking in and out of the water and these giant serpents moving beneath the waves. It goes further than that though. Uh, declassified Russian documents show that researchers who went underwater to look for missing people came across these humanoid looking creatures in silver suits and whenever they approached these creatures three people in the crew were instantly killed and four others injured. Uh, several lights have been seen both beneath the waves and above them and in the sky around and people even report mirages of castles and old buildings on the shore that disappear with the blink of an eye. The dancing plague was a real world phenomenon that occurred in 1518 in France. For whatever reason, a few people in the middle of the town began dancing. A few more that began watching began dancing as well and this went on and on for two months. During this time, about 400 people became involved with roughly two dozen dying of exhaustion. Uh, the story goes that the people who were dancing were crying, trying to get people to help them stop. Uh, local shopkeepers were bringing food out to feed the people as they were dancing since they couldn't quit. Uh, and to this day, it's just chalked up as mass hysteria. No one knows why the dancing plague happened or where it came from, and it just remains a weird story. Panspermia is a belief that life does exist in the universe through microorganisms. In other words, asteroids that pass by Earth or other places that maybe host micro microorganisms carry them through the stars and that's where other life species can come from and things such as. It's pretty much just the idea that life exists everywhere around us even if we don't see it. The Web Driver Torso is a bizarre YouTube channel that popped up in 2013. Since then, all the way into 2018, they upload these random videos that are just a red square and a blue block in different uh, directions as beeping noises is played in the background. There are a total of 624,774 of these videos. And while Google has come out and said that it's merely just something to test the YouTube algorithm, uh, the beeping is definitely odd, meaning leading many people to believe it's a sort of numbers broadcast or something else creepy shadow man. Toxoplasmosis is a real world disease in which the parasite Toxoplasmodia enters the human body. While in the body of a healthy person, Toxoplasmodia does nothing. Uh, if someone is pregnant, it can cause severe damage to the baby. Other than that, it's not really a big deal and the parasite is most often transferred through cats. However, where the theory comes from is that studies have appeared showing that toxoplasmosis can cause neuroticism in the host. Now, while you may not think this is a big deal to people associated with parasites, keep in mind there are about 3 million confirmed cases of toxoplasmosis in the US every year. The theory with this being that the parasite has drastically influenced not only American culture, but world culture for years due to influence of the psychology of its host, which again is a lot. Introspection Rundown is a practice employed by Scientology in order to treat mental breakdowns. This has gone so much so to the point of saying that it is a replacement for psychology itself. While the church is very hush-hush about what happens during these procedures, uh, it did come under scrutiny whenever someone died during one of them. 
Lisa McPherson was a woman who was a member of the Church of Scientology. And after suffering a mental breakdown in a car accident, members of the church came, took her from a hospital, saying that she didn't believe in medical treatment, and brought her to a discreet location. Her body was found weeks later severely dehydrated and malnourished. Not only that, but she had hundreds of insect bites on her, which the coroner later believed to be that of a cockroach. So that creates many questions about this scenario. Uh, did the cockroach bites happen before or after she died? And if they happened before she died, then what the heck is this introspection process that Scientology uses? The United States are an experiment relates to the idea of the great experiment or the overarching idea that the United States was created in order to prove to the world if democracy could work. Where it gets into more of the conspiracy side is what powers wanted this experiment to happen, I be it the Freemasons or the Illuminati or some other creepy historical shadow organization. Belfield PsyOps, I couldn't find anything on. I believe this is referring to the Belfield conspiracy, which is sort of an old joke. Belfield is a small town in Germany, and the joke goes like this. Have you ever been to Byfield? Do you know anyone from Byfield? Do you know anyone who's ever been to Byfield? Well then Byfield simply doesn't exist. It's sort of a parody of the whole idea of crazy conspiracies that just say these blatantly giant things don't exist. Like for example, in searching for this, I came across the theory that Finland doesn't exist and that kind of got the point across. Online video game monitoring is exactly what it says, that the government and other agencies is watching online multiplayer games in order to monitor what people are saying and doing, which considering the announcement Sony just made is not far from the truth. John Babacombe Lee was a man arrested for murder in 1885 and sentenced to hang. In researching this, it seems like he didn't do it, or if he did do it, the evidence was circumstantial at best, since all the evidence I could find was that he was a guy who lived near the woman who was murdered and had a on his arm which meant she may have possibly fought back which circumstantial at best however what's interesting about him is that when he was taken to execution he was attempted to be hanged three times all three times of which it didn't work what happened is the trap door was tested out as he stood there he then went and stood on it to which the trap door was pulled but wouldn't open he stepped off the trap door was tested again to which it opened fine and this process repeated three times which after finally the medical expert said that he wasn't going to be a part of it because god didn't want this man to hang and instead john was just given life in prison it's an interesting story especially since there were witnesses and this happened three times in a row it leads to the idea that perhaps divine intervention didn't want john to die RPG insanity training was a wild read. When I finally found information on it, it's the idea that Yakuza is paying off Nintendo and other game companies such as in order to promote insane behavior in their audience to promote further anarchy and disruption within communities and the world. So, yeah, don't play Animal Crossing. The Oz factor is the idea that much like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, during certain points people can leave this plane of existence. For example, if you disassociate too hard, you can cross over to another nearby parallel universe, or at least a universe between universes. All the examples that I found in this were such as whenever you enter a building where it seems like none of the workers are there who should be there, or if you're ever walking down the street and interactions seem incredibly odd for a small amount of time this could be signs that you are in a sort of space between spaces now I'll be honest here uh, some of these titles are so vague I could find nothing for them exactly like there's so much stuff it could possibly mean that I'm simply gonna have to take a guess and if I'm wrong I'm wrong I'm sorry about that but I have no idea so extreme continents from everything I can figure out either has to do with lost continents or the end points of known continents. Uh, these two actually kind of go hand in hand with each other. I found several theories that during tectonic plate shifts, uh, lost continents, which are land masses that sunk below the ocean, I spoke of Lemuria in uh, tier two, I believe, uh, that whenever they meet the land and the land begins to slope off, the sort of area between continents is where civilizations used to exist. Uh, and that's the best I could do for this. Sorry if that is totally off the mark, but I promise I tried. 
Shaver's writings were first the comics written by a man named Richard Shaver. His theory was that thousands of years ago, aliens came to Earth and, after leaving offspring to populate the planet, flew back out to their home planet and left their children, or as he called them, Daros, here on Earth. His explanation fell in line with what I've mentioned before, the hollow Earth theory, or that of Agartha, and that these children live in underground caves and people who periodically go missing for whatever reason are being used as either food or just a torture source for these underground creatures. Kind of falls in line with the idea that this is not our home and it's someone else's and at any moment we could essentially be wiped out. So only good thoughts on this channel. Porn control. Can I say porn? Whatever. Porn control is the idea that porn is used by uh, mass media or global elites in order to make the populace submissive and compliant. The idea with this being uh, people who watch porn have increased sex drive for other people, which makes them less outgoing and less assertive in situations and generally makes a weaker populace and therefore porn is used as a manner to uh, disable the population for whatever these higher powers want. A temporary autonomous zone is more of a belief, especially one imposed by anarchists throughout history, with the idea that throughout periods of time, whenever government is infringing on culture too much, uh, areas should crop up, or temporary autonomous zones as they're called, in which information could be uh, exchanged freely and thoughts and ideas between people, and then they could disseminate and leave the autonomous zone, and these ideas could continue to proliferate. So uh, from everything I read, essentially think of it as underground churches or, uh, secret book readings during book uh, book burning times throughout history and things such as uh, basically the whole idea that if a government is enroaching on culture or ideas too much that people should come together and exchange them in secret in otheism is when someone believes in many gods yet only worships one god uh, this is something that is commonly seen in old world history where often people would believe in the hierarchy of gods in old legends yet they would normally only go to churches or worship a specific one this is just sort of the name to describe that quantum jumping is an idea in spiritual psychology and very closely relates to spiritual science it is the idea that in times of stress, someone can quantum jump to another version of themselves in a parallel universe in order to gain insight or information. This has a lot to do with self-enlightenment, and if you wanted to think of it as anything, kind of think of it as the Oz factor I mentioned earlier, only done on purpose in order to learn something. Falconelli is interesting because no one knows the identity of this man, and the only reason we know he exists is through his journals and students who say they learned under him. Falconelli was a French alchemist. This relates back to the Philosopher's Stone that I mentioned earlier, but he wasn't just an alchemist, he was the best. So much so that his students say they would routinely see him turn 100 grams of iron into gold and things such as. Uh, considering that he would have operated in, I believe, the 1500s, any practices that he would have been doing would be far ahead of his time, yet again, we don't know his identity. This leads theories for everything that he was an alien or the devil. So. Figure out somewhere in the middle what you want them to be. Fringe Viper releases is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, several deadly viper species popped up in France within the last 20 to 30 years, with the idea being that uh, secret organizations or the French government themselves are purposefully doing it either to keep people out of the woods or control the populations of various species of animal. Although the latter doesn't make that much sense because if you wanted to do that, um, why make them venomous? Grey goo is another concept uh, that has to do with singularity that again I mentioned in tier 2 or ideas of technology taking over. It essentially gets to the idea that nanotech will commit something called echophagy, which translates to literally eating the habitat. The idea being that at some point a nanotech will be developed that only knows to reproduce itself over and over again, and if it sees humanity as a threat to this initiative, it will simply eat everything, and I mean everything. Habitat, landmass, biomass, all of it, and create a gray goo across the planet of itself. It's one of those cataclysmic events in which we could wipe ourselves out, which is talked about several times before and will be mentioned several times again. 
Mach's principle is an idea in theoretical physics and makes us ask the question of why some things are held in orbit while other things are pushed away. Uh, the description or example that's most common is this. If you were to stand in a field and look directly up at the stars and hold your arms out to your side and spin around, then why do the stars stay in orbit as you spin while your arms are being pulled out from you? And essentially comes back to the idea that while in motion, things near you are pushed away and things away from you are kept in a relative position. Uh, it's a weird idea that has to do with, again, theoretical physics, but that's basically the principle of it and it's used to explain a lot of natural phenomena. Bokani, I have no idea how to pronounce that, is a series of forests that occur in the uh, Latvian area of Europe in which these giant stones are assembled into these piles and no one knows why. Theories have originally ranged that maybe a castle was going to be built there and just hadn't, but there's no record of that throughout history. Uh, to giants putting the stones there, there's giants again. What's even weirder is that it seems these stones periodically move. Never enough to be widely noticed or able to be pointed at by everyone, but just enough to keep the local park people suspicious that they're being moved. And keep in mind, these are really big rocks. It's not like some kid could just come throw them into another pile if they wanted. It would take some deliberate force of nature. This has led to people around the area considering it a spiritual site, and it is a very popular destination for yogis and witches and things such as. Deep ecology fascism is the combination of two different ideologies. Deep ecology is the idea that nature should not only be preserved, but that nature itself is alive and should be treated as such. While fascism is, for this purpose, the idea of preserving original ideas and circumstances for future generations. So if you were to combine the two, it would be the idea of preserving nature to such a ridiculous degree as if nature itself was alive, which would essentially treat any crime against nature as a crime against man. Deathworm relates to that of the Mongolian deathworm, in which the desert of Mongolia, the locals have legends of a giant serpent or worm that lives beneath the sand and that people who are caught out there by themselves are swallowed up by it. This is backed up by reports in the area of people going missing with no body being found in the desert and these odd trails being left in the sand for seemingly no reason i don't even know if i can talk about this one either uh, it's exactly what it looks like the joke off a of family guy and says that the government developed one in the 80s and i'm not kidding <laughs> Uh, KKK funded by governments is exactly what it sounds like. The idea that the government has funded the Ku Klux Klan in order to keep down minorities throughout history, and not just our government, but that it, England had backing in it too. So yeah. The Titanic didn't sink actually has more plausible information behind it than any other conspiracy in this tier. The company that owned the Titanic, White Star Line, which keep in mind one of the partial owners was JP Morgan, had another ship in their fleet called the Olympia. Most people have it in their mind that the Titanic was way larger than any other ship at its time, but that's not necessarily true. For example, the Olympia, which was another ship owned by the same company, was very similar in size and appearance. A few months before the Titanic set sail, the Olympia had an accident that damaged it seriously and supposedly was going to cost a lot of money to repair. The story is that the Olympia was replaced for the Titanic and simply names were changed uh, between the two ships and the Olympia was actually sunk as a whole insurance fraud move in order for these stockholders to get a return on their investment. There's a lot of sort of evidence that goes into this. For example, pictures of the Titanic as it's leaving seem to resemble the Olympia more than the Titanic itself. Uh, there are records of crewmen who were supposed to be hush-hush about it, calling the Olympia the Titanic uh, in private. And even more so, the Californian, which was another ship in the vessel, the night the Titanic sunk, went to about the same spot, hung out for a few hours, and then left, implying that they were setting up something. Uh, it's very odd, and there's a whole lot of information about this, so I encourage you to check it out yourself. Smithsonian suppression refers to the recently discovered event in which, around 1900, the Smithsonian smashed thousands of giant human skulls in order to maintain the theory of evolution the way science saw it at the time. This doesn't just stop at skulls though. They destroyed other bones such as femurs that were four feet long 
because it didn't match the current theories of the time. I guess that's the way science worked back then. If it didn't support your theory, just destroy it. These skulls were found across North America, and not only would it have answered questions about immigration to North America before, you know, the coming of Europe and whatnot, it would also have been an opportunity to study these giant humanoid creatures. But we can't, because someone in the 1900s from the Smithsonian didn't like that it didn't match their science project. So, yeah, do with that information what you will. And that is it for tier three. Uh, it was a little while between parts. I had some friends come over for the holidays. So uh, forgive me on that. Part four, or I should say tier four, uh, should be out fairly soon. I really do want to say thank you everyone. Uh, I'm near 1400 subscribers now, which is so crazy. Like to go away with a, uh, with a weekend trip with friends and come back to 400 more subs is awesome. And you guys are awesome and it really does mean a lot. A special thank you to all of my patrons, but a very special thank you to my top tier patrons. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Peth. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Publius. And thank you, Saucy. Link for that will be in the description. It will be the same link for the uh, iceberg photo as I'm just going to continue including that because y'all want to see it. I will see you guys in the next one. There will also probably be a movie review up soon, so look forward to that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.